From a global race is in train to usher in a new era of technology. To keep Australia competitive against tech superpowers like the US and China, the government has released a new national quantum computing strategy. It's a welcome step forward for industry to be underpinned by a contribution from the billion dollar critical technology fund. To explain why this strategy is so significant, joining us live is the Tech Council Deputy CEO, Tom McMahon. Tom, good to see you. Thank you for your time. Let's just start at the start here. We're all very familiar with digital computers. Most of us use one every day, but what is a quantum computer? What can quantum computers do that the current crop of computers can't? Just give us the basics here. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me. Um, it's a great question. Look, you know, I am not a quantum physicist, but what I can tell you in the audience is that the, the advances that we're seeing in quantum technology are the result of decades of really dedicated, hardworking scientists. And we're now on the verge of some technological breakthroughs. And what these breakthroughs in quantum technology will mean will be a, a, a massive step up in the ability for us to use these technologies across computing, across communications and sensing. You know, I sort of liken it to the difference between the old rotary dial phone uh, and the iPhone that you carry around in your pocket. It really is that significant increase in, in capability. So what are the key pillars of this new quantum strategy that was unveiled by the government yesterday? Just how much are we spending on this and, and how will that investment pay off in terms of jobs and, and productivity gains here in Australia, do you think? Yeah, look, I think that, you know, Australia has a really proud tradition of research in quantum areas and we have an exciting set of new companies that are looking to take those technologies from the lab into consumers and businesses' hands. Um, but the fact is that across the world, governments are really backing their quantum industries. So we're seeing tens of billions of dollars invested by governments overseas. You mentioned a couple of them at the top. Uh, and we, unless we act now, we'll lose our early lead in quantum. And so what we're really uh, happy to see is a practical plan from the government to support the industry and a really strong degree of ambition to make sure that Australia is a globally recognised quantum industry player by 2030. And do the people in this sector see Australia the same way you do? I mean, when we talk about those tech superpowers you were alluding to there, the US and China, do we suffer a bit of a brain drain where our brightest minds head off to Silicon Valley and, and try their luck in the US? Or, or are we keeping them here in Australia and, and have enough to, to entice them to, to do their work here? Well, we're, we're absolutely growing some, you know, incredibly talented um, quantum scientists and technologists in Australia. And we're, in fact, attracting people from across the world. You know, I've met some of those people in our, who are working in our quantum companies today. I think that the important thing is that we don't lose sight of the fact that this is a global race. And unless we put our best foot forward, we will lose out to other people. But I think, you know, if, if you look across the world, Australia's um, efforts to date are recognised, but we, we're sort of at a critical point here where unless we continue to work together with industry and government, then we might miss out on what is a, you know, incredible opportunity to grow an industry that, you know, is forecast to grow, you know, billions of dollars and, and thousands of jobs in Australia by 2030. Yeah, it sounds like this is a revolution we'll be hearing a lot more about in the coming years. Tom McMahon, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.